Hello, welcome to the mini lesson on how to solve radical equations. By the way, a radical equation is any equation containing radicals. Does anybody remember our general strategy for solving equations? Don't we try to simplify it? Sure. We try to simplify both expressions on the sides of the equation, but we also try to simplify the equation. Does anybody remember how? What can we do to an equation to simplify it? We can add or subtract the same on both sides. I guess we can also multiply the same on both sides. Correct. Also remember that when multiplying, you have to be careful. If you multiply both sides by zero, you get an equation having more solutions than the equation before. But why would we multiply both sides by zero? That sounds such a silly thing to do. Yes, but we may not even notice that we multiply by zero. Imagine we multiply an equation by x minus 1 at some point, and later we find that x equals 1 is a solution of the resulting equation. That means that if we look at x equals 1, we had multiplied the equation by x minus 1, which is equal to 0. Therefore, 1 may not be a solution of the original equation. Right, and in such a case we have to check explicitly whether x equals 1 is a solution. If not, we call it a fake solution. A solution to the transformed equation, but not of the original one. But let's get back to the allowed operations. Adding, subtracting or multiplying the same, not equal to zero, on both sides of the equation is allowed. What about division? Dividing means multiplying by its reciprocal, so yes, this is allowed too. Right, as long as we don't try to divide by zero. So what about the equation square root of x minus 1 equals 2? How would we simplify it? Would adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing help? Couldn't we simplify the square root of x minus 1 first? No, that's not possible. Although square roots of products and quotients can be simplified, there is no formula for the square root of a sum or of a difference. But couldn't we just square both sides of the equation? This way the radical would go. Yes, that's it. The square of a square root of something is just this something. So on the left side we just get x minus 1. On the right side we get the square of 2, which equals 4. Overall we get x minus 1 equals 4, which can be easily finished. We get x equals 5. Plugging this into our initial equation shows us that 5 is indeed a solution. The square root of 5 minus 1, or 4, is indeed equal to 2. Square root of 5 minus 1 equals 2. Therefore, squaring both sides of an equation seems to be the valid change of the equation 2, one that replaces an equation by an equivalent equation, meaning by one with exactly the same solutions. But it is not, at least not always. The reason is that the square function is not a one-to-one -one function. After squaring two expressions or numbers, left and right might be equal, even if the initial ones were not. The squares of 2 and negative 2 are equal, but 2 is not equal to negative 2. Look at the example, square root of x minus 1 equals negative 2. Let me try. Squaring both sides, we get x minus 1 equals 4, or x equals 5. The same solution as the previous example. Not really x equals 5 is not a solution of the equation square root of x minus 1 equals negative 2, since the square root of 5 minus 1 equals 2 and not negative 2. So we have a fake solution here, right? Right. Whenever you square both sides of an equation, you always have to check whether the solution you eventually get of the repeatedly transformed equation is also a solution of the initial equation. If not, we call it a fake solution again. Let's try another, more complicated example. Look at square root of 2x squared minus 1 plus x equals 0. We square? Why would we square? What would we get? Since the square of the square root of something is just something, wouldn't we get 2x squared minus 1 plus x squared equals 0? Nonsense. On the left you have a sum of a radical and the expression x. The square of a sum is not equal to the sum of the squares. 
Rather, you would have to FOIL the expression on the left, and you would get 2x squared minus 1 plus x times radical of 2x squared minus 1 plus square root of 2x squared minus 1 times x plus x squared equals 0, which can be simplified to 2x squared minus 1 plus 2x times square root of 2x squared minus 1 plus x squared equals 0. But this equation looks even more complicated than the initial one. And it is. That's why we should not square the initial equation, at least not yet. First we isolate the radical on one side. This way, when squaring we don't square a sum, but rather a square root, and really get the something. So, to isolate the radical we first subtract x on both sides and get square root of 2x squared minus 1 equals negative x. Right. But now we can square, right? We get 2x squared minus 1 equals negative x squared, which is equal to x squared, right? Right. But this is a very simple quadratic equation. So simple that we don't even need quadratic formula. We subtract x squared on both sides to get x squared minus 1 equals 0, or x squared equals 1, or x equal to plus or minus 1. We get two solutions, 1 and negative 1. Wait a second. Don't we have to check for fakeness? 1 does not seem to work since square root of 2 times 1 minus 1 plus 1 equals 2, but not 0. Negative 1, however, however, works. Square root of 2 times 1 minus 1 minus 1 equals 0. So 1 is a fake solution and negative 1 is really a solution. The only one. So here is the procedure for solving a radical equation. 1. Isolate the radical. 2. Square the equation or raised to the power of 3, 4, depending on the radical. 3. Solve the resulting, hopefully simpler equation. And 4. Check for fakeness. What if you have an equation with two radicals? Like in square root of 3x minus square root of 2x minus 2 minus 1 equals 0. This can be done, but only if we have two square roots. In that case, we cannot isolate both radicals, so after squaring, only the isolated radical will go. On the other side, we have the other radical and some more expression. If we, if we square this, we have to FOIL, and the radical will still be there. But in the transformed equation, we have only one radical left. To this equation, we can apply the procedure described above. Thus, in case of two radicals, there are two more steps that have to be performed first. Step negative 1, isolate one of the radicals. Step 0, square the equation and simplify. And step 1, solve the resulting equation with one radical. And of course, the last step, step 1, is done using the four-step procedure for equations with just one square root discussed above. So let's isolate the square root of 3x. We get square root of 3x equals square root of 2x minus 2 plus 1. We square both sides, foiling the right, and get 3x equals 2x minus 2 plus 2 times square root of 2x minus 2 plus 1. Now we isolate the other radical and get x plus 1 equals 2 times square root of 2x minus 2. Actually, the radical is not entirely isolated, but the factor of 2 does not hurt when squaring. Right, so we square, foil this time on the left, and get x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 4 times 2x minus 2, or the quadratic equation x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 0, which has a double solution x equals 3. Which checks? Square root of 3 times 3 minus square root of 2 times 3 minus 2 minus 1 equals 0. Now with equations with 3 radicals as 
square root of x plus 1 equals square root of 2x minus 1 plus square root of 3x plus 2 plus 2. It is probably the same, just with one more isolating squaring loop, right? Unfortunately, no. After isolating one radical and squaring, the number of radicals is not reduced to 2. So usually we cannot do these. But so far we only looked at square roots. What we also can do is radical equations with cube roots or other roots, as long as we have only one of them. We just don't isolate and square, but rather isolate and cube, and so on. Okay, thanks for listening. Bye-bye.